Okay, in this video, I'm going to begin a series of tutorials going from or taking us from electromagnetism to optics. And in this particular video, I'm going to try and motivate the, the whole topic. Now, why do I think this is important? Most students will do, most university students will begin a course in optics somewhere in their first or second year in university. It'll usually start with a course in geometric optics and perhaps also take in uh, elements of wave optics. Now, once you begin doing wave optics, things get, uh, you know, they get reasonably complex. However, the foundations for optics will not have been covered because people do not do courses in electromagnetism until at least their second year in university. Why is this observation important? Well, because electromagnetism is the foundation of optics. So without, opt excuse me, without electromagnetism, you do not have optics, and the converse does not hold true. Now, in order to do a beginner's course in optics, you do not need to be very proficient in uh, classical electromagnetism. What you do need to do is to look at the results from, the, from electromagnetism, take the results, take their predictions, and move forward. So, in, in, in one sense, you can kind of forget that electromagnetism is, electromagnetism is the foundation of optics. And this should make sense to you, because think about your computer. In order to in order to, uh, I don't know, let's say write a piece of code, or write, write a program on your computer. In theory, you could write that piece of code by just looking at the atoms and the molecules it in the computer itself. But that's very difficult. So, in order for us to build hardware, what we do is we came up with electronics. So we assume that the chemistry and the physics underlying the, the atoms and the electrons works, and we just uh, we came up with electronics to make it easier and quicker to do it. And then when we started building complex devices, we found that even doing it this way was very difficult. So we came up with things called uh, computer programs. So we could technically, of course, write a computer program in uh, by just looking at the atoms, but we don't do that. And so, uh, th this, so each time that you get a new level of complexity, you kind of forget or accept the previous, uh, the previous knowledge which now is just so difficult and cumbersome for you to work with and you simplify it and do, use something else. So in theory you could do all of your optics by just looking at Maxwell's equations which are from electromagnetism but of course we don't do that because it would be very cumbersome. So in these series of videos what I'm going to discuss are, are some, some of the things I'm going to discuss are written in front of you. Well first of all I'm going to discuss waves. So that's we're, talk we're going to be talking about wave optics, so this is very important. I'm going to discuss where, we'll say that, I'm going to discuss where the, uh, where you get something looking like this. Why do we use x, or x plus or minus vt? I'll discuss that in video number two. We have, I'm going to discuss the wave equation, sinusoids, complex exponentials. Why do we use complex exponentials instead of the, of the, the sinusoids themselves? And I'm going to discuss the wave function, which is a solution to the wave equation. And all of this, of course, it falls out from Maxwell's equations. So I'm going to give you a brief description of Maxwell's equations and why they are important. Basically, bottom line up front, Maxwell's equations govern all of, of optics. And without them, you have nothing. Or with them, you have everything. So just so you at least have seen them once, I'm going to write them over here. Okay, so there are four equations. So the first one we have, that the divergence of the electric field equal to the charge density over epsilon zero, the permittivity of free space. We have that the curl of the electric field is equal to minus the time rate of change of the magnetic field. We have that the divergence of the, excuse me, the divergence of the magnetic field is equal to zero. And we have that the curl of the magnetic field is equal to permeability free space, the volume current density, plus mu zero, epsilon zero, and then we have the time rate of change of the electric field. So these are the four equations which, which we collectively know as Maxwell's equations. So this one here is, this is Gauss, oh, this one here is Gauss's law for the electric field. This is Faraday's law for electromagnetic induction. This, I suppose you could call this Gauss's law for, mag for magnetic fields, but people usually just call it um, nameless, and uh, or say that it is nameless, excuse me. And this one here is Ampere's law. So we're going to discuss all of this quite briefly, uh, just to gloss over it, I suppose, but give you a reasonable 
uh, confidence moving into your course in optics. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also uh, give me some comments. Thank you.